There are so many good open world games. How the hell am I going to get through all of these? Why not tonight? Well, yeah, I could play tonight. <laughs> Two hours later. If you're like me and you love games that give you the freedom to do what you want, when you want, at your own pace, you're going to want to check this video out. And don't worry, there's a lot of inclusion and variety of games and different characters, not just your generic male characters. <laughs> oh my god. What the hell is this? Oh, this is the new Cleopatra for the Netflix uh, series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A docu-series. <laughs> it's a freaking dude, man. Hey! You don't know how she identified back then. In number 18, The Pathless is a beautiful open world game that really emphasizes on its movement mechanics. You travel at ridiculous speeds throughout this island and at the same time you have to use your only weapon to shoot these gems in order to keep your momentum going. You also have an eagle companion that you can use to glide and it feels satisfying. There are no fast point travels in the game which is understandable because it would make no sense because it's all about the movement in this game. Your goal as an archer is to dispel the curse that has taken over this mythical island. You must fight insane enemies that look so beautiful and colourful and reminds me a little bit of Zelda, especially when you are fighting Ganon. But you must solve puzzles and upgrade your eagle's abilities in order to progress the game. There is also no mini-map and you must rely on spirit vision in order to find certain locations and from time to time, which can be daunting, is a massive red storm can appear out of nowhere and you must use stealth in order to guide yourself back to the light. And if you do get caught, then you lose all your crystals that you gained. It isn't a long game at all which is quite refreshing for a modern day open world game but even with the story it keeps you engaged throughout and it makes you want to find out the history of the island and what happened to this lost civilization. Now in number 17 now if you really want to have some fun especially online then Riders Republic is a game for you and wow have I been impressed by looking at this game from riding at speeds with bikes, wingsuits, snowboarding and skis. There is so much variety in this game, it looks addictive. When riding your bike, you have to manage your balance and stamina. And with skis, you have to manage your balance. But honestly, when I say the gliding looks the most fun, the competitions is where it's all at. During these races, it looks like absolute carnage. Some events remind me of Tony Hawk as you have to showcase some of your skills. There is so much other enjoyable activities you can do from jumps, tight ropes to cross and the online multiplayer in case you get bored. And when I say there are ridiculous races to be done, 64 multiplayer races. Didn't even realize it was a sequel to another game called Steep, which came out in 2016. From Rocky Mountains to the Snowy Mountains. And what else is cool about this is if you are subscribed to PS Plus, you can download this game. So that is exactly what I did. Now in number 16, if you really love open world games that is pretty much endless, then No Man's Skies is for you. There are a ridiculous number of planets to explore. And when this first came out, it was quite broken. And now it is incredible. You will need to explore, survive, gather and trade supplies and build your base. You are only limited by your imagination when it comes to base building and you can be as unique as you want. You can find and collect some unique ships in the game which look pretty freaking cool. I believe you can store up to 12 ships which you can switch to at any time. Where you have a ship combat and you can fight up against pirates or look to raid other convoys you come across in the game. You can upgrade weapons, your ship and your suit to make yourself more powerful. You could just jump online and your friend could be on another planet or you can take part 
part in multiplayer missions by visiting the player hub known as the Anomaly. And you can also play this game in VR. And of course I don't have VR, but anyone who does, good luck, you can enjoy it. I hate you. In number 15, we have a game that I truly think is an underrated game, and that is Metro Exodus. It is a survival open world game and you play as a character named Artyom. You live underground in a place called the Metro Exodus because the open world is filled with zombies, but also contaminated with radiation. Now, when I first played the first couple of hours, I wasn't too keen on the characters and the story. It wasn't really believable. Are you trying to kill me with worry? What if next time you don't return from the surface? As I got along in the game, the characters became more believable. I started seeing the depth that was under them. And the story is very, very deep. By the end of it, I do remember I did have a few tears. You're probably thinking I cry here easily, but these games, they're really good at telling the story. <laughs> You decide to leave the Metro Exodus with your family and friends and survivors and you go out to see if there is a working government or help above ground. Story is linear but you are thrown into these beautiful landscapes that are absolutely huge. Some places you have a few objectives and you have to transverse via boat or on foot and at the same time there are monsters and hostile humans around that you need to be careful of. There is side content in these areas and you can essentially go where you want in these bigger areas but you do have to be careful because ammo is very low. You have have to do a lot of exploring which is part of the game so you can get bullets get different weapons and upgrade your weapons as well by the end of the game it leaves you craving for more and luckily there is more story at the end with the dlc just don't waste your damn ammo number 14 we have a game that i haven't really mentioned a lot and if this was a video specifically for ps5 game then i wouldn't have mentioned it because red dead redemption 2 i just wish rockstar would do a next gen update for this game even though it's technically a previous gen and it's at 30 FPS. This game is worth playing on your PS5 if you've never played this game. Rockstar are probably thinking about bringing out GTA 5 again on the PS6 and 7. I haven't played too much of this game because I just want to play more games that play at 60 FPS so I can experience that next gen feeling. The attention to detail in Red Dead 2 is unreal. You are roaming in this incredible detailed world and it is so alive. But I know you love me desperately. Random encounters to NPCs that are more real than most people in mainstream media and review outlets. There is content upon content in this game. Even when you're just riding on your horse, random encounters would happen. And what a character Arthur Morgan is. <laughs> is he white? Yeah, what's that got to do with anything? You had a complaint on Twitter from an SJW that says that this character has no depth. Oh, did you now? <laughs> he do. Oh, I'm done with this world. <laughs> I'm still putting the complaint through. <laughs> now in number 13, we have a game that rose from the ashes because it was one of the worst, if not the worst launch games in gaming history, and that is Cyberpunk 2077. What a return. Now playing Cyberpunk 2077 in 2023, it is a polished game. If you haven't played, it is worth playing now. Night City is a beautiful city and I love roaming around on my car, on a bike, the detail in the city and even outside the city is breathtaking. You have the main story, like I said, with multiple endings and you get to choose dialogue options in missions and throughout the game that has consequences. From being able to buy multiple apartments, take down gangs, collect and upgrade weapons and overall the gunplay is so sweet. I am a bit confused with the upgrade system and all the weapons. I'm not sure if they've kind of fixed that. I played it through. I was about to play it again. And then I thought, no, I'm going to play another game because my backlog is way too big. Now, in number 12, if I thought it was hard to convince you to play Cyberpunk 2077, it might be hard to convince you to play Death Stranding. Yeah. Do not play this game. Don't listen to this guy. I can yeah. hear you. Oh. Okay then. As the living and the dead are connected and they come in the form of BTs and your job as an Amazon delivery driver is to reconnect America. It is a lonely place. A lot of people did say that this world is pretty empty and I think that's part of the game to see how empty this game is. There is hardly anyone in this game apart from yourself and a few other enemies. But Sam is a lonely character and unlike traditional games you have to control his balance by the use of the triggers. And if you can give this game about 10 hours it really does 
start opening up in terms of story, vehicles, and weapons. You will eventually be able to build roads and transverse the area a lot easier, and it becomes a lot more fun seeing that development. The story's flipping complex, and I had to research a bit. If you do that, you will start understanding the game. But with Death Stranding 2, I just think if Kojima can take on the feedback, this could be a flipping amazing sequel. Now, number 11, we have Assassin's Creed Origins, where it takes place in Egypt. You can get this game on the PS Plus for free. And if you're struggling with money or you're thinking, I don't want to waste money on games, if you just sign up for the PS Plus Extra, you will have access to flipping months upon months of games. This is one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games just because it is based in Egypt. The architecture, the buildings, when you are traveling on your horse or camel, it is ridiculous, especially with that 60 FPS update. I just love doing the side quests and opening up the map. The only problem is, is that it can feel a little bit bloated. So I've played around 35 hours and I'm the sort of person when I see a map and a question mark, I need to go there. I'm very tired playing this game. You can come back to it. You want revenge as your son dies and it is your sole purpose to kill the people responsible. And Bayek is such a great character that you empathize with. Cleopatra is in the game, which is quite accurate to the actual historical figure where she's Greek and Macedonian. You hear that Netflix? Why would you do that? What's next? An Elon Musk documentary? Huh? Or what about Ryan Gosling as Barack Obama? That is historically accurate. <laughs> They look alike, they could be cousins. Now in number 10, if you're an old school gamer like me, then you will know Sonic the Hedgehog. To be honest, it's been tough for Sonic the last few years because you don't really know what direction he's going in. But with the success of Sonic Frontiers, who would have thought Sega would have been able to actually pull it off? Take a risk and create a really amazing open world game for Sonic. It has got massive positive reception. It just looks so cool being able to explore these weird structures that Sonic can climb up in the traditional Sonic fashion. I also love the fact that you have these sort of structures you can access that then takes you into smaller activities that really gives you the best of both the traditional Sonic and the new open world Sonic. I absolutely love where they're taking Sonic and this is just a snippet of the future of Sonic but it's on my backlog in its wrapper but I cannot wait to dive into this game once I get through the backlog once I become a full-time YouTuber. Uh, uh. And what else I heard is that the soundtrack is amazing. Now in number nine, we have a game that probably for the average gamer like myself is probably not for you and that is Elden Ring. There's no doubt that with Elden Ring is probably the best open world game in modern gaming in terms of the absolute freedom to do what you want. If you want that in an open world game, it does not hold your hand. Now I still haven't completed the game because I'm stuck on this damn fire giant and I feel I'm not leveled up enough or I picked the wrong class and at the moment I do not want to start the game again even though I've put in over 50 hours. So I've just like just stop playing the exploration the direction and the sheer surprise when you discover dungeons caves and a freaking dragon coming out of nowhere it can be daunting for some players that is why it may or may not be for you but because you have to spend time on freaking youtube finding out what the hell to do how to now at number eight we have immortals phoenix rising this is such an underrated game and even at the time of release there was like next to no promotion for this game but this is honestly one of my favorite ubisoft games the game is unbelievably beautiful. It's colorful and you play as Phoenix, male or female, and your goal is to help the gods against Typhon. It is very similar to Assassin's Creed game. So coming out of an Assassin's Creed game and into this one, I was so put off. I spent hours of exploring this world, leveling up my abilities, searching these vaults for Zeus's lighting. And when I say these puzzles are very enjoyable, they're creative. Some of these vaults are flipping hard. Jesus Christ. I've got this. YouTube. Yeah! You can get special mounts, fight beasts, use your special abilities, and just explore this amazing world. The sounds of this game are unbelievable. Now in number seven, I used to love the Far Cry series, and I'm sure there's a lot of us that did. We had Far Cry 6 come out, and that got terrible reviews. And for some reason, <laughs> I actually liked that game, probably because I hadn't played a Far Cry game since like three. Far Cry 5 recently dropped with a 60 FPS update, so I think this is the perfect time to dive into a Far Cry game. I do not know nothing of the story of Far Cry 5. Now, 
Now, I'm not saying it's going to be revolutionary, but if you like that typical Ubisoft open world game, which I generally do, then Far Cry 5 is probably going to be one of those fun freaking games where you can lock bases, fast travel, kill enemies, and get a hell of a lot of different guns and weapons. I honestly want to give this game a go. A game going from 30 to 60 FPS, you just know it's going to be worth playing. Now, at number six, we have Spider Man. Oh, oh my god! It's Peter Parker! Oh my god, I can't believe it! Yes, it is me, Spider Man. Your accent? What? I'm Greek Spider Man. What the hell? Who the hell made Spider Man Greek? I'm Peter Pavlo. This is ridiculous. Oh, Presentation. Yeah. Sorry about that guys, um, if you haven't played Spider-Man Remastered or Miles Morales, you better make sure you play these games because these are the best superhero games, especially Spider-Man in New York. Winging and swinging and exploring, there is so much to do and yes Spider-Man Miles Morales is a lot shorter than Spider-Man Remastered but there are so many side activities to do, unlock suits, different collectibles, they're still on the PS Plus, I believe they took out the PS4 version. Beating the crap out of enemies and putting these combos together using your amazing powers the cinematography of the action is ridiculous and with miles morales with that electric venom ability and i feel like i love miles morales a bit more than the spider-man remastered maybe because it's been so long since i played it anyways you can support the channel at buy can you just coffee. get on with the video they know Yes, okay, I am. You've just made it longer. Okay. Stop. <laughs> All right, anyways, back to the video. Now, at number five, we have Hogwarts Legacy. I have completed the story of Hogwarts Legacy. What an amazing game this was. This was the game we all wanted as a child of loving Harry Potter. That's why I had to give it a 10 out of 10. The variety of cosmetics, the iconic places you visit, Hogsmeade. Hogwarts Castle is the most incredible place I have seen. And of course, the combat with all those different spells works so well. With Confringo to light enemies on fire or Protego to use as a shield, there is so much depth in this game. It might seem a little bit long, but the collectibles, the field guides you have to complete, and of course the Merlin trials, which I heard there is a lot of Merlin trials, and yeah, there is. But I'm just enjoying collecting all of these, and now that I've completed the main story, I want to go back to it and just do all of these little side missions. Probably take me another 30 hours. Now in number four, I've forgotten how amazing Horizon Forbidden West looks, and what you're going to see is the start of the DLC with Burning Shores, and oh my gosh, I think because this this is just on PS5. I am amazed by the graphics. Like these characters look incredible and it must be because it's just on PS5. With the main game, there is so much to do. Yes, there was a lot of question marks I needed to be doing, but I didn't do it because I was like, you know what? There's nothing else to do. But now that I've booted up the DLC, I've forgotten how amazing this game is. But the open world is beautiful. The machines are incredible. Just my advice is make sure you scan and identify their weaknesses of these machines and make sure you have the required weapons and ammo to shoot at their weaknesses points before you can try and kill them. I cannot wait to dive more into the DLC because I've heard that Aloy is now lesbian. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Hey, I don't mind that. <laughs> hey, that other woman's quite hot as well. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Aloy. <laughs> strongly recommend playing the first game with Zero Dawn. Still an amazing game at 60 FPS and you need to know what happens in that game in order to appreciate Forbidden West and the storyline. So there's two games there and the DLC to get through. Now at number three, we have probably the best samurai game for me, Ghost of Tsushima. One of the best games that is still holds a special place in my heart. I just don't know how this game did not win game of the year. I'm not going to get angry. Playing as Jin Sakai, you get injured and nearly die from battle with the Mongols that are trying to take over your land. You then get saved by a thief and it's up to you to save your uncle who has been taken. And as a samurai, you have to go against your code and against what your uncle believes in. Go against your code in order to win this battle. You will then explore this amazing world of Tsushima and the open areas of this land is incredible. Instead of a marker, when you travel, you slide up on the D-pad and the wind will show you in what direction to go where your quest is. And I love this. From being able to pet foxes, save Save civilians and take over bases that have been taken over by the Mongols. I love this game so much and I strongly recommend playing this game. Jin Sakai is becoming one of my favorite PlayStation characters and the fighting in this game is top notch. You get different stances for different enemies. I can't wait for a Ghost of Tsushima 2 which has been suggested. There is a DLC with Iki Island as well. I just still don't understand how The Last of Us Part 2 got 
game of the year. Best narrative. Let's see who's going to win. Us part two. Okay. Best right. role playing <laughs> game. The Last of Us Part Two. Okay, this is best fighting no, game. The Last this of Us is Part stupid. Two. What For is best going simulation on or strategy Ooh, hey. game. The so Last stop. of Us Part hey, Two. Hey. Next up, best what? sports racing. Oh my God. The Last of Us <laughs> Part Two. Best esports team. The Last of Us Part Two. Now, in number two, we also have one of my favorite games that is easily in my top ten now. We. Days Gone. This is the open world zombie game with deep storytelling that we've always wanted. Excuse me? What? What? I know he's white. Get over it. I was just gonna ask for a glass of water. <laughs> if oh. you don't mind. Alright then. There is a massive community for Days Gone and evidently from the videos I have done, this is the open world zombie game we have always wanted. The story is amazing, keeps you guessing of what could have happened to this post-apocalyptic world. You have to build trust in certain camps, you get to drive your amazing bike which you can then upgrade which feels absolutely incredible. I hardly fast travelled in this game because the bike was so damn good. And now that I've taken on hordes, beaten about three hordes now and I was really bad at the start and I'm, I'm getting in there but it makes me want to play through the game again which i will eventually get back to it keeps you guessing and wanting a sequel and as of this video ben studio are going to be letting us know what their next project is it probably isn't a days gone too but it's going to use the open world aspects of it now in number one damn 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 the witcher 3 with that ps5 update when i say this game brought emotions i can't even explain it's in my top five probably of all time the game is over seven years old the music in this game. The beautiful world building, the characters. You can have different love interests in this game. There is a lot of multiple choice, which will result in different actions and different consequences. That was my phone. And for how old this game is, CD Projekt Red, you did an amazing job. What happened with Cyberpunk? Riding your horse across these lands, fighting monsters, learning what oils and potions to use to help you in battle. It can be confusing, you've got two swords, one for humans, one for monsters, and you will understand once you look at your bestiary, but you will learn at what oils to put on your sword before battle, what potions will help you. And I love that about the game. And as I said, the music is unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, what is that? And if you want to see a full review of the game, make sure you click the link. Now, what do you think about the games I have chosen? Are there any I've missed out? Be sure to drop your thoughts in the comments below and let me know. Well, let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video. I completed Resident Evil 4 Remake on PS5. Shout out to Larry. I'm still playing on hardcore mode and I'm at the castle and a giant is on the roof throwing crap at me while I have to fight off these cult nuts. I'm having a blast and this remake is just as good as the original. My score is 10 out of 10. Cult nuts, good. This is one of the best remakes and Resident Evil 4 was originally one of the best games ever. So they have done an amazing job with this remake this is one of the best remakes out there and what a game there is so much replayability and who would have thought playing as leon a generic white character he's great even in 2023 <laughs> then this video is for you so if you've just bought a ps5 or you're over it it isn't a long game at all, which is quite, you know, it isn't a long game of The competitions is where it... <laughs> Shit. Now the story is... Yeah, fucking piece of shit. Ah, oh, yeah, fucker. Are such legends. Yeah, okay.